a lot of things that have been touched on already are, are really the key piece. It's really what is the community connection for our folks? How do we get them into and involved and connected with their community? And as was mentioned by our, our anthropologist, which I always love, is the cultural part of it, is that work really is one of the mainstays of America. People said, oh, capitalism, you gotta, you gotta go to work, get a job. That's the, sort of the American dream. And it does really vary as what makes the most success for folks. And, and our job as job developers, you know, Lori and my staff's job is really to try and figure out how to figure out the passion, figure out the connection, figure out the fit um, that's really gonna work for folks. And sometimes the fit is an oddball thing. It's like, well, can they get to the job? Great job, but it's, can't get to it. How are we gonna make those things happen? So we really work about, you know, how do we go down that path? And one of the fundamental beliefs we really have is that people assume people should walk in and be successful today and life is great. What I found is really success is the far side of failure. You gotta figure out how to fail, figure out what you did wrong, so that you can then become successful. So you really have to start to figure out and do self-assessment, understand that, and if it's not a good job fit, it's not a good job fit. We work with a lot of employers. We actually have to coach employers how to fire someone who should get fired. And they're like, but they have a disability. We shouldn't fire them. I'm like, if you don't fire them, you're not teaching them that they're actually not doing the job, or it's not a good fit, or it's not an appropriate place for them to be, and what are you teaching them? Not really great skills. And so we have coached, and my example is actually one that is with Regional Center of the East Bay. I actually had to convince the executive director of the East Bay, a very good friend of mine who just retired, that there was an individual who was working for them for 10 years that uh, was in their mailroom to start and had done a lot of stuff. That the job was really causing her, she was dual diagnosed, was really causing her mental health challenges. And it was time for her to go. But they're like, we work with folks with developmental disabilities. We, 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 we couldn't let her go. I'm like, we will find her another job that's more appropriate. So we did, we found one at a library, it's much calmer, easier paced, she's been very successful over time. So it's one of those things that sometimes we have to work on both sides and say, hey, what's the best fit? How do we make it happen? What are we really gonna try and do? And we know going in, I mean, Project Search, as Lori alluded to, is one that really does something differently for our folks. Internships give our folks the ability to demonstrate and not have to pass a test. We went in and we actually um, have a contract with the state of California. We employed at, the, at Speak about 25 folks full time to um, basically create e-files for the Department of Child Support Services. And we bid on this job, we came out and we took a look at it. And the specs for the job, I couldn't do. You had to be fully proficient in all aspects of Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, Outlook, blah, 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 blah. This was a pretty much high speed scanner. Can you unjam it, keep it going? Can you make it feed right? Can you compare the document on, that you have on the screen and does it, can you read it on the screen? Don't actually have to know what it says, can you read it? Can you identify those and can you upload it? It was like four steps, we're like, oh, God, this is awesome. And they're like, are you sure you can do it? Piece of cake, we can have all kinds of employment opportunities to go do it. But the job specs were such, they hadn't changed them. No one really looked at, what does it take to really do this job? So part of our role is finding out what people can really do what's a good fit for folks, and how do we make it happen? So it's really, we try and really deal with that. And my running joke on employment is, and everyone once gets quoted incorrectly, if employment was easy, everybody would do it. People often say, employment's easy. I'm like, I know they like to talk about employment. Legislators, oh, we want more employment. We want more folks with disabilities employed. We've been at 85% unemployment for, I don't know, 30 years. So we haven't really moved the needle very much. As Lori alluded to, we have gotten some opportunities to move things forward. And one of the things that this area is well known for is collaboration. And we collaborate on getting Project Search here. Um, EBI was able to get two locations here. We just are opening one um, at the Doubletree in Pleasanton. Contra Costa ARC just opened one at the Embassy Suites in Walnut Creek. In the hospitality industry, not high glamor, but it's an industry that's growing. One of the things we look at is where are jobs going? It's sort of like the old joke about, well, I have these great buggy whips I'm trying to sell and no one's buying them anymore. We have to look at what the newest thing. And so as EBI has done the dietitian area aid position, we're trying to do home health aids. One of the things we found, we've had great success of our folks supporting other folks with disabilities to do their job um, or do uh, live their life. So it's one of those things is how to try and make all those things go out there and do it. We also evaluated a few years ago and really said, you know, the growing population of folks who are coming into our system are folks with autism. So we partner with Joey Travolta. Uh, we do a film camp in St. 
uh, at St. Mary's um, every summer. And from that, we then had folks who really wanted to go into film as a, the employment. So we actually have a practical film media workshop out in Livermore with 35 students in it right now, where the great thing about film, as Joey would say, is it takes 100 people to make a movie. It's a team of folks. It sort of re requires people to get in there, be social, be able to do those things appropriately. It offers those opportunities. Right now, we have a gentleman um, who's on an internship, paid internship, thanks to, the, to RCB, in San Diego. He's helping start another workshop like the one we have now. We have two folks who are about to go on an internship to Arkansas for two weeks to run an academy to see, get other folks interested in the process. People are like, an internship? I mean, it's not here locally? It's like, no, this is the film industry. They go where the film jobs are. So once we got through that, it's like, it's work. But it does give people the opportunity to really go out and experience the world, work as a team. I have a staff member who's got a great term. She's, you know, being there and they, they create their own movies. They, may, they write their thesis film every semester and they've written some really cool films that I'm like, that's really cool. Actually, my house has been in several of them. So um, it's one of the things as an exec, you get to transport stuff around and you get to offer your house as a um, film set. My wife was not happy when smoke was coming out of the, ba the closet on her ground floor. She said, that wasn't in the agreement. I'm like, it's dry ice. It's okay. It'll, it'll be okay. But you have to go through and say, yeah, that's what we want to do. But these movies are incredible. And in the room, in the process of doing that is like, God, those are great ideas. And that's a great idea. Our challenge is we have to figure out which of these great ideas we can do today. So it's sharing that process and watching folks. And we have a young man um, who dropped out of high school. Dropped out, said, I can't do this. On the spectrum, really struggled with it. Came to film school. The school actually paid for it for a year and said, he'll last three weeks, maybe four every day. We hired him. He works for us. Actually, no longer works for me. They just hired him in San Diego. He went to San Diego to, to work for them. But he went to camp, and then one of the cool things is we did a follow-along movie related to them, and they talked about a parent going like, I watched him work with these four young folks with autism. And he talked about their ideas, and he got them through the process, and they created a script together. He understood them. He understood how to work with them has all his own issues. You have to you know, deal with that, you know, that structural thing, but it's something he can do and he can be passionate about. His funny advice is actually, it's like, I should have got my high school degree. I'll get it eventually, but we'll go on from there. So one of the partnerships we do have, it's actually hireable.org, um, is to try and really promote employment. And what we've really looked at is, way, how do we outreach to employers? How do we outreach to folks? And one of the things that Project Search does is it does deal with the culture, not just of who we are, but the culture of the employer. We're trying to go out and say, we have 12 individuals, four of them have autism, other just developmental disabilities. They can then see that, oh, wait a minute, they're not all the same. There is that sort of, you know, predetermined, well, everybody's seen Rain Man, right? They're, I'm good, I understand, absolutely. Don't count cards with them. But it is that mythology, how do you go out there? And so our job really is to find the passion, figure out what's really important for folks, and also try to help folks deal with what I'll call the traps of employment. People encourage you to, Bonnie mentioned it, Social Security, SSI. One of the challenges in our world is we know the statistics. If you go on to SSI, the likelihood of you getting off SSI is less than half a percent. And the biggest barrier to employment that Lori and I both face regularly is he can only work 20 hours. Because if he makes more than $822 a month, he loses his SSI. Okay, really? Whereas we can get people really good jobs. And so we, we fight the, the trap of people getting sucked into what's out there, um, what's really important. Taylor Day Service, um, Lauren mentioned, we use it in a variety of things. We use it for educational support also. So we support folks who are going to community college. We were supporting a young man who got into UC Davis, was there, was about to flunk out. Family's in a panic, like, oh my God, he needs help. And what's he need help with? It was executive functioning. Oh, I have a paper due in two weeks. What should I do today? And what should I do tomorrow? And it was much more what I call is job coaching for college. It's really a matter of how do you support people to be successful there. We now see him, I think, once a month. He's figured out, he's developed his own skill set, he's figured out how to do it. Some of it was how to deal with the social interactions. We've had folks who are in community colleges, love um, study groups and project groups. Our guys don't always do well in that situation. We had one guy. Everybody else loved him because he did all the work on all the projects and they all got an A. 
okay, this is not a good outcome on, you know, it's a way to look at that, it's a way to do that, but it's not really the outcome that we're really trying to achieve for our folks. So how do we include them in that? How do we give them those, those skills that are important that make sense for folks? You know, Department of Rehabilitation, it's really the front door for anybody who doesn't have regional center services. Anybody with a disability can go to the Department of Rehabilitation and they will provide services. Their focus right now is really 16 to 25. So if you're in that wheelhouse, they can really do a lot of things. And now they're being pushed significantly to actually increase employment outcomes for folks with, with developmental and other disabilities, primarily developmental disabilities, of which autism is one. And so it's really trying to get them to understand their challenge they have no idea what to do. We educate them regularly, like, oh my God, they have autism. Yeah, and? So it's really a matter of trying to figure out how to really push that through, make it happen. One of the things that we're actually really excited about, um, and Tom and I kind of downplay it, we helped get a piece of legislation passed that would allow internships to be used in lieu of taking a test to get into state employment. State employment, you need a PhD to get the figure out how to get to an application, is what I figured out. I mean, it's like almost impossible. If you can get to that point, it's great. So we're gonna pilot a program that will allow people to, to use internship hours to meet the minimum qualifications for a job. So that people can actually go in and get jobs. And so our challenge now, after two years of getting the state to figure out how to do it, is they gave us, oh yeah, three weeks, go. You guys, you guys can get this done, sure. Um, but it's really a matter of how do we open up the doors and create opportunities. And that's really the job of looking at what's out there, what are the fields, and not downplaying the really exciting things like SAP. People, oh, that's really cool. I'm like, yes, that's one avenue. Film and media, really cool. It's one avenue. It's not the answer. Project search is not the answer for everyone. Paid internships may be helpful for everybody. You have to find the right fit for what makes sense for folks. And I always say is, my thing is like for, I, I talk to transition age folks all the time, it's like, you know, does your son or daughter have a, a job at home? Do they do chores? I'm like, what do you mean do chores? That's how you develop work skills. How do you start down the path of, oh, I do this and this happens. And the value of the check and the value of what they're gonna get out of it is really the most important thing you can do. It's like, I had a family that um, I work with for years, oh, it, they don't really have to work. You know, we have a plenty of income, they don't have to work. I'm like. Okay, let's, let's play this out. So we got our part-time job. She did a part-time job. I was moving the family later, and they said, well, how's it going? <sighs> you know, the other day, it was, you know, our husband's birthday, and she went out with her own money, and she bought him a birthday present. I said, well, how'd you feel about that? She was, like, so excited. So does work matter? Okay, yeah, work matters. So, I mean, ultimately, you got to figure out what's the passion, what are we really trying to do, and how do we make it happen? And the challenge for all of us is, you know, it's not gonna work for everybody. There's folks that should fire us because, you know, we're not gonna make it work for everybody. We have great ideas, but it's all about the staff. It's about the relationship that they have. My final piece is I always laugh is, you know, if we get someone a job, one of three things will cause them to go off track. Something happens at home, their supervisor will change, or their love life. And then all, everybody else I know in the world goes, well, that's true for everybody. I know, I just bring it up as a point that when things go off track for folks, our guys need a little more support to get back on track. And that's really what our job really is to try and support people to be successful and deal with skills that they can go on and do that. So.